Ladies and gentlemen, if I may have your attention for a brief announcement, please be reminded video live streaming is prohibited within the chambers. We welcome any audio and video recordings. The two areas at the back of the room are reserved for recording. If these areas reach capacity, upper mezzanine will become available. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. We'll go ahead and call this informal commission meeting of January 3rd, 2023 to order. Uh, first item of business we have is a, uh, a proclamation. Miss Judy, you want to come on down front? All right, so whereas we are here today to express our appreciation to Judith Moorfield Covington, Judy, and to honor her for her distinguished 24 year career with Montgomery County Child Advocacy Center. And whereas Judy is a lifelong resident of Montgomery County and a graduate of Middle Tennessee State University, and whereas Judy began her career with Montgomery County government in 1998, the same year I graduated. <laughs> a group of community leaders chose Judy to open and develop the Montgomery County Child Advocacy Center. A child advocacy center is a child-focused program in which many diverse disciplines, law enforcement, child protective services, mental health and medical services, and prosecutorial and other court services collaborate to make decisions about investigation, treatment, and prosecution of severe child abuse. This collaboration is required by state law to protect children, safeguard the community, and ameliorate the effects of child abuse. And whereas the Montgomery County Child Advocacy Center opened its doors in October of 1998, Judy has presided over the center as almost 7,000 children have been interviewed about allegations of sexual abuse severe physical abuse and neglect, witnessing, uh, witnessing violence or severe crimes and other serious concerns. She sat with children and families as they worried and grieved. She guided them through the sometimes mystifying process of child abuse investigations and she con connected them to resources they needed to begin the healing process. Judy has tracked and heard thousands more cases than were referred for investigation and whereas Judy has convened the child protective investigation team ensuring access to high quality specialized training and holding the team to best practices as they conduct the sensitive investigation. And whereas Judy is known, Judy is a known resource in the community for information, guidance and training about preventing and responding to child abuse, providing her expertise and consultation to private daycare settings, church groups, the Clarksville Montgomery County school system, and at public events to prevent child abuse and neglect. And whereas Judy is married to Mark Covington, and she has two children, Jacqueline Covington, who with her partner Brent Driver has three children, Kenley, Collins, and Banks, and Clarence Covington, who with partner Gina Covington has a child, Emery. Now, therefore, I, West Golden, Mayor of Montgomery County, Tennessee, and on behalf of the Board of County Commissioners and the citizens of this community, do hereby congratulate Judy Covington and salute her for 24 years of loyal and dedicated service to Montgomery County government. We hope that her retirement years are filled with happiness and good health. 
Happy retirement, Judy. I did want to thank the county commissioner and the mayor's office. So I've sat in this position through five mayors. Actually, the first mayor was a county executive, uh, Bob Thompson. Uh, and with the support of the county commission, we've been able to focus our efforts on building a team to investigate. But I have one challenge for all of you tonight. Uh, if we look at statistics, we hear one in four girls, one in seven boys will be sexually abused before their 18th birthday. I challenge you to learn the signs and symptoms of child abuse and the courage to report it, even if it's a family member or a family friend, because it's up to everyone in this community to stand up for our children in Montgomery County. And I believe in what we're doing, and I certainly appreciate your support. Thank you. All right, next we'll go into our, our public hearing for zoning resolution. Mr. Tyndall. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, County Commission, and Happy New Year. We have one case before you tonight. All right. That is last month's case. We'll ignore that for now. Uh, it should be on your tablets in front of you, correct? We'll go off the tablets. Okay. Uh, case number CZ26-2022. This is the application of Hunter Wynn and Vernon Weekly. Uh, this is 18.31 acres, currently zoned R1 and proposed to go to R4. Uh, it is not an extension of the zoning classification. Uh, it barely touches that corner uh, of the R4. Um, maybe misses it by a couple feet, uh, as you can see there off uh, the side street. Uh, the property fronts both North Liberty Church Road, approximately 545 feet south of the Liberty Church Road Sunshine Drive intersection, and also fronts the south terminus of Craig Drive. Uh, that's in the city limits. Uh, this is in the County Commission District number 11. Uh, as you can see, it's an irregular shaped lot with a single family structure. The applicant statement is back of property coming off Craig Drive and Appleton Drive. The uh, property is in the urban growth boundary, which permits them to uh, rezone to R4. R4 in the county can be either a multifamily or a single family lot. Uh, the applicant was asked at the Planning Commission what they intend to do, and they did say multifamily. Uh, there are some comments from the other departments. Uh, you see the school, uh, no comments or concerns from the other departments. You do see the school comments listed about the capacities of the three schools listed. As you can see, the property is irregularly shaped. The intent of the uh, developers to develop the back half of the property that comes off of Craig Drive. Uh, there's a narrow portion in the middle there that is uh, difficult to run a road out to Liberty Church. There's also potentially a sinkhole in between there. The historical estimates for this property, oh, I think we're pulling it up now. Thank you, guys. As soon as they get this up, we'll, we'll go through the map just a little more. There we go. Uh, so first off, you can see where the R4 here off of Appleton Drive, that is actually in the county. The city limits is in the dashed red line that runs north-south there, and then east-west is this property line, is this property line here, then comes back up here, then back down towards Old Spees Lane and back towards the city limits. So that's the pretty much the southwest corner of the city limits uh, before it touches Dover Road a little further to the south on Liberty Church Road down here. Uh, these apartments are in the county. Uh, the rest of everything around here is in the city limits. So the 
access to the back here would be through the city back out here. Uh, if it remains in the county, it would be served by the Woodlawn Volunteer Fire Department, uh, not the city fire department. Here's Craig Drive as you uh, enter the site at the south there. Uh, the site had been cleared uh, over the month of December. And that's looking off Craig Drive. And this is North Liberty Church Road, property over on the left. And there was a house there that's been since removed. And uh, it goes back, gets thin to the right there and back out to the rest of the property you see in the rear. Uh, one other thing to mention in the city, you can see there's R2 and R2D in the city limits. R2D is duplexes. R2 is just small single family housing. Um, a lot of that, a lot of those lots are a mix of duplexes and single family throughout that uh, south part of that neighborhood. Historical estimates, if the entire property were developed, 219 units. Uh, obviously, there's a, some drainage issues and some irregular irregularities uh, that will make that difficult to uh, develop. Staff recommends disapproval. The proposed zoning request is inconsistent with the adopted land use plan. The R4 district is out of character with the adjacent development pattern for the unincorporated area of the county and adequate infrastructure and no environmental issues were identified as part of this request. The planning staff recommended for approval. Happy to take any questions. Any questions for Mr. Tindall? Commissioner Pritchard. Mr. Tindall, um, you said that they would only develop the back half of this piece of property? That was the applicant, uh, their statement at the Planning Commission. Uh, let's see if we, okay, so you can see you have this, this little tail here you can't yeah. use. It gets very narrow right here, and this appears to be a low area, a sinkhole, so it would be very difficult to develop something through there. With the remainder out here, you could do a few units off of North Liberty Church Road. Um, I'm not saying they're not gonna do that. I think the primary uh, opportunity right now is here off of Craig Drive. And you're saying that's not large enough for 219 units. Right, that takes in the entire 18 and a half acres. You know, back there you have about 10 acres, 11 acres to work with. So it'll be a little less, but still multifamily units. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Padre. Um, good evening. What focus has been giving to the school capacity? Because I mean, you're gonna have 219 units. That's gonna bring in a bunch of children of various ages. Has that been looked at? Has that factor been considered? You can read the school department's comments uh, there on page uh, two of the staff report. It gives you the capacities of Liberty Elementary, New Providence Middle, and Northwest High School. I'll say the same thing I said at city council last week. That, that's why the elected bodies have the final say on zoning cases, because it does take in things that are outside of maybe the planning commission's <laughs> control, such as school construction and school capacity. Okay, my other question is, are there future plans of adding more schools to this area? Because there's going to be a drastic need. We are exploring right now uh, an elementary school that would cover a portion of this area uh, and several other schools for the next 10 years. Okay. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Woodruff. Thank you, Mayor. I think everybody knows what question I'm going to ask in this reference to fire. But it's, it's kind of a simple question. You probably have the answer or the engineer have the answer. What, what size water lines are we looking at or is already there? Are they going to put in? Because I think that a fire hydrant can't be on less than a six inch line. So anywhere from six inch to eight inch. So, but you, you don't have any information on that, do you? I don't have that information, but uh, when they come back in for site plan, that's something we'll address. You know, we wouldn't let them build off of a two or a four inch line. They would have Correct. to upgrade that back Correct. to uh, whatever point that would be or run it to the property. Okay, thank you. That's part of the question, but I'll let the rest, I'll let the other one go. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Harper. Thank you, Mayor. Quick question, Mr. Tindall. Can you give me a greater clarity on the staff's comments about disapproval? Sure. 
Uh, we felt as staff that this being in the county and having to go basically through the city and through a neighborhood in the city to get to our fort to the back of a property, you typically don't put your density at the back of a neighborhood. Um, we will deny almost every application that puts large density at the rear of a neighborhood like this does. And for this, you have to drive through Craig Drive, past Fairfield Drive to get back to this piece of property. And it will likely have more units back there than the rest of the neighborhood that you pass through. Uh, plus, again, having to go through the city limits back to the county. If this came in with, say, R2, we'd probably be in support of it because it would just add the uh, same or similar units to the current subdivision. That makes sense. I mean, typically we see uh, higher density development at close to the main thoroughfare, and then <laughs> as you get further back, you have less and less density. This is the opposite of, of that type development. In, in my opinion. So, appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Joe Smith. To address a couple of the issues that are being discussed, uh, at the Regional Planning Commission, we did ask the questions about fire service, uh, whether it was gonna be on sewer or septic. It, I do believe that they said it was gonna be on sewer, and the intentions are to envelop this property and that section of orange R4 up there. Uh, to annex those into the city later on after construction is complete so that it would have the adequate fire service so it's not a long response time from Woodlawn volunteer. Uh, just something to contemplate when you're thinking about this. Thank you, sir. Any more questions for Mr. Tyndall? Thank you, Mr. Tyndall. Next, we will ask if anybody would like to speak in favor of CZ 26 2022. If so, you'll have three minutes and please state your name and address. And we'll take three in favor and then three against. Mayor, Commissioners, I'm Vernon Weekly, 4740 Highway 41A South. <clears throat> this piece of property, it does touch the other R4 piece of property, it's the extension of a zone. I'm a surveyor and I own them and I know they touch. <laughs> I have a little advantage on that. We're looking at developing, yes, that piece at the end of Craig Drive, the western portion of it. So this is an extension of the R4 that's, that's being built over there. It's all lined along the north property line with duplexes. So, that, so the, the multifamily has already been established in the area years ago. People don't like to have to drive by all those duplexes to get into this to a single family residential area. So that's why it's sort of a zero mark years ago. Pattern's been established. If you look at the permits that have been pulled in the last uh, few years, they've all been multifamily permits. There's no single family going on in the area. We are gonna bring this into the city uh, right after this. We were told we couldn't get the support for both the zoning and the annexation all at one time, so we're taking this step at a time. So we'll bring the zone in and we'll be, then we'll be bringing it into the city. It does have, a, all the utilities are available, fire hydrants and everything are out there. It'll be uh, city of Clarksville lines. And um, once we bring it in the city, it will be supported by the Clarksville Fire Department. Um, we've, we've seen a lot of announcements lately of all the industry and all, and big announcements. and. Thanks to bodies like y'all and the city council, industrial board, the mayors, we get this industry in here and then we have to support the people that work at it. And so that means we have to have more residential. And then with interest rates going up so high, that forces more rental property. And so we think this is a good opportunity to extend the rental property that's already out there and to supply a need for Clarksville. And I'd be glad to answer any questions if you have any of me. We typically don't do questions from the people speaking for and against. Okay, thank you. Anybody else like to speak in favor of CZ 26-2022? Seeing none, would anybody like to speak um, against CZ? What? Oh, I'm sorry. Speaking in favor of it? Yeah. Against, okay. If, if there's nobody else, come on down. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Yeah. 
Ja. De bijles. Ja. Go ahead and state your name and address. Oh, yes, sir. My name is Stephen Blake, 1481 North Liberty Church Road. This property rests at the foot of my driveway. I've been in that house 34 years. Raised my family. Five combat tours, 23 years, 101st. Put it all in there to put 500 people at the foot of my driveway. I was cold at Christmas because they kept rotating the power on and off. This is not right. It's not about the community. If it was, I would matter. So I'm hoping my remarks today will matter, and I'll try to do it quick. Good evening, Mayor, Commission members. Respectfully, I appreciate it. I want to first say congratulations to Judy Covington for 24 years of service. I know what it is. Been there and done that. Still doing it. You know, I wore a suit today out of respect to this community and this council. But I also wore a suit so that I remember to honor the Lord, whose commandment is to love my neighbor as I love myself. But it's hard because I'm a little torn after working my whole life to invest in a property to have them come in and just fill it full of people when the assets are not there to support it. A fire hydrant isn't what's going to feed them. There's not a single, not a single not a single hardware store on our side of town anymore. Y'all know that? They're closing the banks. Did you know that? They're locking everything up in the Walmarts. Did you know that? Take a look around. All right, you can't, they're building hundreds of apartments right now behind the Walmart. Walmart likes it. I stay there because I'm dedicated to this community. But I would tell you, honestly, I don't begrudge my neighbor trying to do something for himself in the community. Got the interest rates. But money is not an excuse for doing what's in the best interest of the community. It's the people. It's the people. It's us. All of us. We're in the best interest of the community. Our churches. You're going to move 500 kids in there? Because you know these are low-income people. They, they can't buy a home right now. I got it. I got it. I'm, I'm with you. So we'll stuff them in overpacked schools, right? That's not right. You know, I got the housing market. But I stayed here, committed to this community. After 40 years, don't you think I could have decided to live somewhere else? I could have. I love Clarksville. I fought for it. I deployed from it five times in Desert Storm over 30 years ago. My children were raised here. They all know the rendezvous of destiny. So why is stuffing a bunch of people in some tiny little homes on the backside of a residential area really what this city wants to do? Is this the best place for them? I'm not saying we don't need apartments. We do. And we've got an influx of people coming from all over the United States. So Tennessee is a great place to live. Please try to wrap it up, sir. I'm sorry. Yep. All right. So the bottom line is this, okay? If you look at the pictures I sent, I sent them online, the place flooded last night. We got storm water running all over the place. We got a flood plane on the back of that property that ain't there. It's at the end of my driveway. You know, I would just ask that you take a look at, is this what's best for our community? Is it really? Because if it isn't, then you need to vote against it. I appreciate your time. Thank you, sir, and we appreciate your service. Yes, sir. Would anybody else like to speak against CZ 26 2022? Seeing none, is there any other discussion on CZ 26-2022? Seeing none, we will close the public hearing. Next, we have our resolutions. These next resolutions will be on the, or are subject to be on the consent agenda. First one is 23-1-1, resolution of the Montgomery County government to the to apply for and participate in the Community Development Block Grant program addressing food insecurity in Montgomery County, Tennessee. Any questions or discussion on this one? Seeing none, 2312, 
resolution authorizing the application for a Tennessee Hospitality Re Recovery Fund grant from the Tennessee Department of, of Tourist Development for Clarksville Montgomery County Tourist Commission. Any questions or discussions on 2312? Seeing none, 2313 resolution authorizing TDOT assistance in construction and completion of a dedicated road to the LG Chem site known as Battery Way. Any questions or discussions on this one? Seeing none. 2314, resolution amending resolution 22117 to add an additional $75,000 to the $350,000 previously approved to the budget of the Montgomery County Highway Department for engineering funds needed for the XL Highway 12 service. Any question or discussion on this one? C9 2315 resolution amending the budget of the Montgomery County General Fund for the purpose of contracting a private security firm for Veterans Plaza. Any questions? Commissioner Bill. Thank you, Mayor. Do we currently have two deputies assigned for security for Veterans Plaza? Yes, sir. And we've had vacancies over there, and that's where we're getting the funds for this. So the deputies that are over there, they don't have the same exemptions like they do for a courthouse, and they have a duty to respond. So if they're light somewhere else, TCA says that they have to respond and, and leave that place. Does that make sense? Okay. So I, um, I've been working with the, the sheriff's office. I wouldn't have put this on there without the support of the sheriff himself. And, uh, and that's, where we're, that's where we got the funds from, for, from those open positions that were over there. Okay, so just so that I understand, the money that's been allocated for these two positions, we are transferring it to this resolution, essentially. Is that correct? Right. And okay. we've had a lot of requests from, from our uh, elected officials that reside over at Veterans Plaza as well. Absolutely. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. <laughs> Commissioner Harper. Thank you, Mayor. Just a quick question on the underlying account numbers and descriptions. Um, looks like a debit to medical insurance for the 50000 Is that correct, Jeff? $50,000 Yes, sir. That is correct. It's actually a credit to that. We're pulling the money out of the medical insurance to cover the contracted service. From the, from the sheriff's office? Correct. Please, please do. <laughs> Commissioner Bill. I will take another stab at this. Um, we currently have, we have, this commission has allocated the sheriff's office for two positions, specifically for Veterans Plaza security. From what I can remember since 2018 or 2019, is that correct, Jeff? Say that again. I don't know. We have allocated two positions for the sheriff's office specifically for security for Veterans Plaza. I believe that's correct. Yes, sir. Has there, have there been two positions actually doing that since we allocated those funds? Not always, no. Okay. But on the resolution, and I think this is what Commissioner Harper was asking, on the resolution, we're pulling... We're basically doing a transfer from medical insurance to, I'm assuming, to cover the cost for the rest of, of this fiscal year. You've had, so, you've had vacancies within the sheriff's office, which has allowed for the medical insurance to fall under budget, which allows for us to use that $50,000 towards the contracted services. Okay. So, therefore, we're not going to be no longer at... We are no longer allocating those funds for those two positions because it's, we're going to be paying a security firm instead. We haven't eliminated any positions. So this is going to be an addition. This is, this is the, the savings is there from the vacancies that we've had at the sheriff's department, sheriff's office. 
vacancies has been an ongoing issue there. So I, I guess what I'm trying to understand, and maybe it might be helpful if the sheriff can come up and maybe better explain it. Good evening, commissioners. And yes, that is uh, something that we discussed uh, for last several weeks about staffing over there at Veterans Plaza. I know security over in Veterans Plaza has been an issue. Uh, staffing has been an issue, not just for my office, but for every office across the state, uh, keeping those positions full. Uh, of course, whenever we have vacancies in our patrol unit, we're going to staff those before we staff positions over at the plaza. That's my primary responsibility. Uh, but we've always had at least one deputy over at the plaza uh, manning a security post over there. And what the mayor was mentioning a while ago, whenever something happens right there in that area, you know, we have a duty to respond. So that takes us away from that post, which uh, abandons the security uh, at the, uh, the plaza. So what he's trying to do is something that we tried to work out from the beginning was to have a defined security team at that plaza that uh, that was their sole focus. Uh, to where if it was an issue that they uh, had there, they could, they could handle that. And if they needed our assistance uh, any further than uh, the issue that they were dealing with, of course, we would respond to that just as uh, it, with any other call uh, for service. Uh, so that's why it was set up. When uh, the mayor and I first talked about that, of course, we identified uh, the funds that are in uh, our, the health care portion of uh, our, our benefits package. And, uh, of course, every uh, member of my office and uh, employees generally are, are staffed, and Jeff, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't want to speak for you, but for the full family plan. Uh, so there's monies left in that to be able to help uh, the mayor do what he wants to do uh, for security over there uh, for other contracted services. Commissioner Harper, you have a question? <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. I appreciate it. Uh, I understand that, Chair. I'm, I'm good on, sure. on that part. Um, my question more is related to the resolution itself. We don't address anything about medical insurance in the resolution. All, we're, all we said in the resolution is that we would debit the general fund balance. That's really where my, my question is. And I am highly supportive of us creating a safe environment at Veterans Plaza. Mm -hmm. We we have needed to do something and and I'm glad that we're doing it. I'm highly supportive of that. My question is really more related to the way the resolution is worded um, when we're debiting medical insurance and we don't reference that anywhere in the resolution. Uh, that just gives me a little pause. Perhaps we need to reword the resolution a bit uh, to cover that. That's that was my my question. Okay, we can look at amending the resolution as well. Commissioner Jeremiah Walker. My question, and correct me if I'm wrong. Yes, sir. Yeah, we are taking this money that's already there to fund these two positions. Right. Well, th these, these are positions. These would be contract security. Okay. Right, so if, if I didn't feel like this was an immediate need, I would wait till the budget process for this, but the the ladies that are sitting over here, the other elected officials, they have strongly suggested that we need to take care of this okay. right right now. And they they've they've shared uh, clear examples with us about situations that both them and their employees have encountered in the parking lot after hours and, and even during business hours. So, okay. and and I wholeheartedly support that. But I guess my question is. This funding is coming from money that's there because of uh, vacant positions in the sheriff department. Yes, sir. Prayerfully, if these positions in the sheriff department uh, are filled, then what do we do? Where where will this money come from then? We would we would have to budget for it, but there's enough money currently in our budget because of vacancies that have already happened. Yes, sir. Commissioner Knight. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, this question is probably more addressed towards the sheriff. I just wanted to know if this is approved, uh, who or which body 
uh, gets the opportunity to choose the private firm uh, that would win that particular contract? Would that be the county commission that uh, chooses that particular firm, or is it the sheriff's department? That, that would be the mayor's office that would select that. that so firm. the mayor's office would choose? We go through an RFP process. Okay. Any other questions on 2315? All right, seeing none, all of these items are slotted to be on the consent agenda. Items in this portion of the agenda are considered to be routine and non-controversial by the county commission and may be approved by one motion. However, a member of the county commission may request that an item be removed for separate consideration. We have been asked by the, by the sheriff's office for resolution 1-6, this would, we would entertain a, a motion to suspend the rules during the formal session. It's a resolution to amend the fiscal year 2023 uh, drug control fund budget for the purchase of a patrol service canine. And the sheriff is up here to answer any questions you might have on 23-1-6. I can give just a brief overview on that. Uh, back in June of this past year, uh, many of you know that we lost one of our canines, and this is just essentially replacing that canine. It's a, a dual purpose Belgian Malinois uh, that we're uh, gonna be getting, and uh, it just, uh, the opportunity to purchase this dog, it just kind of fell in our lap about two weeks ago, and if we don't jump on that, we're gonna lose it. Uh, I know that many of the vendors that we've used in the past uh, or not, um, uh, don't have a dog available because uh, agencies across the country uh, are really replacing a lot of their dogs that are not imprinted in uh, marijuana particularly. Uh, so it makes it more and more difficult for us to find a replacement. So we happened to find this one here about two weeks ago and uh, this is the purpose we need to move these funds so we can purchase this dog. And in fact, it's about two, $3,000 cheaper than what we would have had to purchase uh, before. So this one's in Arkansas. But just wanted to kind of lay that out there, but I'd be glad to answer any questions. Commissioner Pritchard. Yes. Sheriff, um, how much is this Malinois? And are, the, are they going to be training him? Are we going to pay for the training ahead of time? Yes, ma'am. This 13-5 will cover the entire, uh, the entire thing. It, it covers the dog, the training for the dog. The dog's already been imprinted, and there's two weeks of training that uh, the, the handler will have. Uh, with this uh, vendor in Arkansas, and uh, this is just what they do. They, they train dogs and train handlers, so this will cover that. And it, it comes with a, a one-year performance guarantee and a two-year health guarantee as well for that price. Okay, and, and uh, this particular vendor, have you vetted him? Yes, we have. We have. They, they've uh, been turning out good product for years, and I've actually talked to several of them right here locally, one of them in Dixon County that's used them and has been satisfied. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for the sheriff? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Any other discussion? Seeing now, we'll move on to reports for approval. First, we have commission minutes dated December 12th, 2022. This should be in your drop box. The county clerk's report and notary list. Next, we have nominating Committee nominations. Commissioner Harper, do you have a report for us, sir? Thank you, Mayor. Um, nominating committee met tonight, and we have several that are here, and I'll present those in the form of a motion. The first is the Agricultural Extension Committee. The first name on there, we're still waiting on a confirmation, so we're going to defer that to next month. But in the next slot, Billy Fry is nominated to replace Commissioner Carmel Chandler for a two-year term to expire January 2025. <coughs> On the Jail and Juvenile Detention Committee, Jeremiah Walker is nominated to replace Commissioner Walker Woodruff for a two-year term to expire January 2025. David Shelton is nominated to replace Commissioner Joe Smith for a two-year term to expire January 2025. On the museum board, Kayung Dawson is nominated to fill the unexpired term of Paige Atkins with a term to expire January 2025. Commissioner Joe Creek is eligible to be nominated for a second three-year term to expire January 2026. On the nominating committee, John Gannon is nominated to replace 
Commissioner David Harper from Districts 1, 3, or 19 for a two-year term to expire January 2025. Commissioner Michael Langford has been filling the unexpired term of Commissioner Bryant, is eligible for nomination for a two-year term to expire January 2025. Commissioner Tanji Smith has been filling the unexpired term of Commissioner Lewis and is eligible for nomination for a two-year term to expire January 2025. And on the School Liaison Committee, Carmel Chandler is nominated to replace Commissioner Lisa Pritchard from Districts 8, 9, 10, 11, or 12 for a two-year term to expire January 2025. And I'm entering that as, as a form of a motion. Thank you for your report, sir. Next, we have the county mayor nominations. We have Animal Care and Control Committee, Commissioner Ryan Gallant nominated to replace Commissioner Joe Smith for a two-year term to expire January 2025. Lieutenant Benjamin Blackwin nominated <clears throat> to replace Captain Scott Thornton for a two-year term to expire January 2025. Tanner Shamblin has been filling the unexpired term of Tracy Hogan is nominated for a two-year term to expire January 2025. On the Purchasing Committee, Commissioner George Padro has been filling the unexpired term of Commissioner Ziegler and is nominated for a one-year term to expire January of 2024. Commissioner Nathan Burkholder has been filling the unexpired term of Commissioner Bryant and is nominated for a one-year term to expire January of 2024. Commissioner Chandler has been filling an unexpired term of Commissioner Albert and is nominated for a one-year term to expire January of 2024. Commissioner Knight nominated to replace Commissioner Creek for a one-year term to expire January of 2024. Rules Committee, Commissioner Simmons has been filling an unexpired term of Commissioner Albert and is nominated for a two-year term to expire January of 2025. Commissioner Creek has been filling an unexpired term of Commissioner Keene and is nominated for a two-year term to expire January of 25. Commissioner Bill nominated to replace Commissioner Harper for a two-year term to expire January of 25. Commissioner Joe Smith nominated to replace Commissioner Gannon for a two-year term to expire January of 2025. Commissioner Langford is replacing Commissioner Ray for a two-year term to expire January of 25. For EMS committee, Commissioner Ricky Ray nominated to fill unexpired term of Commissioner Gallant with a term to expire of January of 24. Next, we have county mayor appointments. For the budget committee, we have Commissioner Joe Smith has been filling the unexpired term of Commissioner Racconi and is appointed for a one-year term to expire January of 24. Commissioner Simmons has been filling an unexpired term of Commissioner Lewis and is appointed for a one-year term to expire January of 24. Commissioner Leverett is appointed for another one-year term to expire January of 24. E911 board, Sheriff Fuson is reappointed for another four-year term to expire January of 27. Chief Crockerell has been filling an unexpired term of Chief Ansley and is appointed for a four-year term to expire January of 27. Director Jimmy Edwards is reappointed for another four-year term to expire January of 27. Stormwater Board of Appeals, Nick Powell is appointed to replace Brian Trotter for technical for a two-year term to expire January of 25. John Clark is appointed to replace Brad Martin, a lay member, for a two-year term to expire January of 25. Eric Hawkins is, re is appointed to replace Mark Cook, lay member, for a two-year term to expire January of 25. And Tanner Shamblin is appointed to replace George Watson as an alternate for a two-year term to expire January of 25. Clarksville Montgomery County Insurance Trust, Heather Fleming is appointed to replace Michelle Lau with a term to expire February of 26. Convention and Visitors Bureau, Roy Furing is appointed to fill the unexpired term of Tony Xavier with term to expire June of 24. And that concludes the county mayor appointments. These items will also be on the consent agenda. Next, we have verbal reports. First, we have the school board liaison, Commissioner Gannon. Thank you, Mayor Golden. Obviously, it was the month of December, so there wasn't a whole lot going on as far as the school board was concerned. They did go over their tenure list of teachers that were 
given tenure and the ones that didn't make the tenure list, as well as they voted on the Parks and Recs tennis courts. Uh, the Parks and Recs tennis courts over at uh, Carmel was passed uh, by four to three, so they will continue, they will, that will take the next step to go forward and looking at the tennis courts from the, what is it, the USTA or something like that. It's, U.S. Tennis Association. Um, and that's basically all they did for the month of December. They are meeting tonight. We have conflicting meetings in there, and but we'll cover everything when we get to our next report. Thank you. Sounds good. Thank you, Commissioner. Next, we have our Highway Commission liaison, Commissioner Michael Lankford. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, concerning the Highway Department from the prior meeting to December, crews had finished up any needed shoulder clippings and right-of-way trimmings for the year. Bridge maintenance had been conducted on Cooper Creek and Poplar Springs roads, and they began to make repairs to any salt equipment for the upcoming winter season. The highway supervisor briefly went over expenditures, and they're on target relative to where they are in the fiscal year. 48 out of 44 work orders had been completed at the time of the meeting, those additional four being rollovers from November. Looking forward, the Rawlings Road Bridge will be their next project. They have seven open positions still, and the department was prepared for the ice storm, storm that was predicted and they mentioned they were down one dump truck due to an accident that had totaled one in their fleet. Thank you, Commissioner. We appreciate all the work they did during that ice storm. Other reports filed are Building Code's monthly reports, found on page 32 of your drop box. And is there any other discussion for this evening? Commissioner Shelton. A few weeks ago, there were a few of us that had expressed <clears throat> concerns regarding the new policies regard from the city parking commission and uh, giving passes to elected officials. Uh, I have broached the topic with the uh, with the uh, group, but as of right now, this is where we stand. We uh, we are submitting our uh, license plate for our vehicle to the mayor's office so that when it's time for us to go to those committee meetings, we can uh, have that license plate blocked out of our, out of their system. Um, and we are aware that this is not the best solution at the time. And what I am gonna do, and I'm gonna ask you a, a couple of things. Number one, if you have not submitted your uh, license plate to the mayor's office, please do so. Um, there, this also applies not only to us, but also several clerks that are also within the system that need to be able to go to these meetings. The, uh, the, the request that I have is kind of personal. Back me up. If you have concerns and you would like to try to get and make that concern heard by the Parking Commission, the meeting is on, I believe it's on Tuesday the 17th at 3 o'clock p.m. Please be there. I want to, if this is a concern for you, I want to ask you to, to kind of to step up. I can't do this one on my own because I have to abstain. I can make the argument, I can't vote on, any, on anything. So this is, a, uh, this is a very important topic to a lot of us, so I do want to give you that personal invitation, and I hope to see you guys in a couple of weeks. Thank you, Mayor. What's the location for that meeting, sir? Uh, the, that is in the city mayor's uh, conference room on the fourth floor of City Hall. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Commissioner Woodruff. Here. We could just wish Commissioner Chandler a happy birthday. Oh, you stole my thunder. <laughs> <laughs> happy birthday, Commissioner. I've got a little bit of a cough where I'd sing for you, but. <laughs> Does anybody have anything else? All right, we'll close this meeting now. Thank y'all.